Hey there folks, my name is Peter and on today's video we are talking Milwaukee pack out. So I just moved into my new house. Obviously you saw the first video with the uh, NFL Blitz arcade machine. Check it out if you haven't already. Today we're in the new garage, which I realize I haven't given you all a full tour because it's still a little worse for the wear. Some things need to be put away and organized. Uh, this project is one of those like nice to haves and I don't necessarily need to be doing it right this second. But I have all this equipment and I figured why not get it installed on the wall? Now I've been considering a packout system like this for quite a while, ever since I got that first set of packout boxes with the drawers. Uh, and what's nice about this is that I realize you can build pretty much everything that's here, but the fact that it's also modular and versatile, and once you buy it, you, whatever you use it for today, you can always change it up in the future. Like this puppy right here is made for like one of their Milwaukee tumblers, but I'm probably gonna use it more for like pencils and writing instruments. Uh, this is made for like, uh, paper towel holder. I'm thinking I'm probably gonna use it for tapes and then I might even get a second one for paper towels. So the possibilities are pretty much endless. I have a lot of this stuff that I need to mount because I wanna store my outdoor tools like rakes and stuff on it. Uh, I wanna store power tools, drills and such over here. Uh, so we're just gonna give it a shot. I've never actually mounted one of these before and from the videos that I've seen, uh, there's a couple different ways you could do it and it's maybe not as trivial as Milwaukee would have you think. So we're, today we're just gonna try and do our best. Um, as I understand it, there's basically ugh, like a dozen ways you could do this, right? You can go right into a stud if you have one. Uh, if you're going into drywall, they recommend to use number 12 anchors. You can obviously go into concrete directly. But if you're going into drywall and you don't wanna make all those holes, people might recommend that you put a piece of plywood up there and then attach this to the plywood. Uh, you can use strapping which is actually what we're gonna try and do here today. Uh, you could use uh, blocking in between your studs if you don't already have the drywall up. There's a lot of different ways to do it, uh, but I bought a one by four by 12 uh, piece of wood. Behind me here, I've got a 60 inch space. And my plan is to have a piece of strapping here, a piece of strapping there, Milwaukee basically wants you to use no less than four screws per board. Um, and I think I'll be able to use at least that many uh, on the top and at least that many on the bottom. So let's try and find some studs and go from there. So a technique that I've been using a lot more recently when dealing with trying to find studs on a finished wall is I've got my stud buddy. Uh, I talked about the stud buddy when I did my Vito Pro Pack review, which you should check out if you haven't already. I find this thing to be so much easier to work with than all those like electronic stud finders. It's possible that I've just never used a good electronic stud finder, but in my experience, the signal to noise ratio is way off. Um, and I've also seen a lot of videos with horror stories of people thinking they found a stud and really they found uh, a water pipe or something, something like that. So link is in the description if you're interested in trying out the stud buddy. Um, and of course, if you're into tools, do-it-yourself projects and EDC, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Uh, all I'm gonna do is run my stud buddy until I find a stud, right? So there's my screw. And then typically you just you know, like use a pencil, right? And mark the fact that you found a stud. I don't like that because I don't wanna have to erase anything. So what I've taken to doing more recently is just drawing an S on a piece of painter's tape, taking that piece of painter's tape and putting the S right where the stud buddy is. So now I know this represents an entire stud. Of course, I can leave this tape up here if I wanna come back to it later, which in this case I probably will because uh, you shouldn't see it behind the pack out. But obviously if you wanna take it off, there's no mess, no erasing, you're good to go. So now you can see we've got uh, all three of our stud locations marked on the wall. These are not 16 inches on center and I don't know if it's because, you know, I've got this, this doorway over here. And so I don't know if we've got something funky going on over here, like, you know, king stud, jack stud. I'm sure you all in the comments can let me know, but uh, this looks correct to me. And so now, like I said, I have basically 60 inches to work with uh, in terms of the length of this wall. Whoops. In terms of the length of, the, the length of this wall, it's actually closer to 64. Um, but the pack out, the plates are 60 inches when you put them side by side. So I should be able to have, um, I'm gonna have to mark the top and bottom hole locations uh, on the pack out, probably to transfer those to the wall. And then my piece of one by four strapping will just equal those locations. 
Uh, I'm going to attach the 1x4 strapping to the wall using uh, GRK wall screws and then I am I found like small lag screws to attach the pack out plate to the strapping. Unfortunately, I still don't have a good means of like automatic dust collection in the shop. So that is something we plan to work on in the future. All right, so now that we have our screws, pre-drilled uh, so that it matches up with the distance of the studs. Uh, I'm gonna put these on the wall. I did make a mistake, uh, as I do with all projects. I bought 5 16 lags. It requires quarter inch to fit within the pack out hole, so I'm gonna have to go swap those out. But I wanna get these boards on the wall. Obviously for you all, it'll be a uh, snapshot in time. For me, I'll have to actually go for a little drive. But nonetheless, we'll get these on the wall and keep on keep it on. All right, so after a brief trip to the hardware store, so I wanted inch and a quarter fasteners because if I went inch and a half, it was gonna go through my one by four and into the drywall, and I was gonna end up with a lot of like, not big holes, but holes nonetheless, and I didn't want that. Uh, I could not find quarter inch by one and a quarter inch lag screws at Home Depot. So then I said, okay, we're gonna have to switch this up. I ended up going with these GRK cabinet screws. Focus. I said to myself, you know, if these things are strong enough to hold up a cabinet, pretty sure they can hold up what I'm gonna put on this wall. Uh, it's not gonna be that heavy, truthfully. And I should be able to put one, two, three, four, five, seven screws per panel. Um, and I think that'll suffice. So now that I have this, you know, this board is 64 inches long, two panels side by side is 60 inches long. So I'm basically just gonna come in two inches from this side and then it'll be centered uh, on this portion of the wall. And then also while I was at Home Depot, I bought a few more pack out accessories. So I can't get this thing on the wall fast enough so that I can start get everything assembled and, and show you guys how it looks. Um, so I'm excited. All right, so after one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, so I've got 20 screws in total holding up two plates. Uh, you know, I'm not gonna jump on this thing, but it's definitely quite secure. So what I chose not to do, I, I didn't run a, an additional one by four in the middle here. I suppose you could if you're, if you're worried about it. I am not. My reading of the instructions was you have to make no less than four connections and I have 10 per board. What I also like is that I have a lot of room for expansion up top. They have those uh, crates and they've also got the cabinets, but the cabinets like 140 bucks. The crates are like 20. So if I was going to go something high that I don't use that often, I would probably just go with the crates pretty cheap. But for now, let's get this puppy loaded up with gear. So one thing I can already tell you that I don't love is that these little containers, these are pretty cheap. They're nice because they've got this piece that goes in there like that, so if you want to store a bunch of fasteners. But they don't have like your, I guess, prototypical interface with the wall. So you can hang them, but because it doesn't go all the way across, I don't know how you'll be able to see this, you can, you can kind of move it left to right. And then if you're OCD, 
uh, like I am, it's not gonna look perfectly centered. So I don't love that, but otherwise, I think this is pretty freaking cool. All right, folks, there you have it. So we've got two of the large pack out wall plates using one by four strapping. 60 inches across, this thing is rock solid. So far I've got the, uh, I guess they call this like the big, uh, big shelf. This is more of like a cup holder. I'll have to get one of those pack out tumblers. For now I've got my label maker. The reason I wanted two of these paper towel holders, uh, I've got this one for tapes, that one for actual paper towels. Uh, I ran out of stuff to put on the wall, so I just have my Milwaukee uh, like pack out container with all of my GRKs and, and screws and stuff like that. Uh, these little cups, I don't know that I'm using them for their quote unquote intended purpose of like fasteners and nuts and bolts and stuff like that. But uh, this one I've got pencils and marking materials. This one I just have these cotton swabs that I picked up at Harbor Freight. Um, and then they have the M12 battery holder. Uh, these are nice because you can actually hear it snap in. So it's not just gonna fall out. Uh, of course, pretty much all the stuff, right, is built for mostly vans, I would assume. Like if you have a work van, you wanna keep stuff all together, uh, but anyway, lastly I've got this tool holder. I've got my M12 drill and my uh, M12 impact. Then over here it's got this little tray at the bottom. I don't know how well you can see it, but I've just got like a little Milwaukee bit kit. Uh, it's a little awkward to get this thing in and out, but. And then this is also an additional shelf up top. Of course, if you wanted to, you could put your chargers up here for your batteries. And then uh, in my case, I've got an outlet down below. So what I think I'm probably gonna do is put two more wall plates up top. And again, I think the baskets would work really well uh, in a setup like this for stuff that I don't need that often, but I wanna keep high and dry, off the floor, all that stuff. Um, and in general, to me, this is like super aesthetic. I love this system and I love the like how modular it is. I mean, my assumption is that I'm gonna play around with this quite a bit. I don't know that the setup that I've, I've configured here today is necessarily like the setup. I'm sure I'll change it a lot over time. Um, but that's what's great about the system. Oh, I forgot, I've also got this, uh, this little hook here. So I've got my big wooden mallet sits right in there. That's all for today's project. If you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments down below. I'll try to link any products that I made use of here today. Uh, as always, if you're into EDC tools or do-it-yourself projects, be sure to subscribe. It helps me out a great deal. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.